Now we want to zoom out and take a look at the national impacts of the smoke. Major cities like Washington, D.C. and New York are dealing with the effects. It's all coming from Canada, where hundreds of wildfires are burning, forcing thousands to evacuate from their homes. Half of the fires still not under control. ABC's Rena Roy has the details. Urgent warnings from officials across the Northeast as millions of Americans face smoky conditions for the third day in a row. I don't want people to let down their guard and to become complacent about this because we have to be prepared for the winds to shift. This is the unknown. We're tracking the large plume. That large plume descending upon New York City, creating an eerie dystopian glow Wednesday. We live in one of the most beautiful places. Uh, to see the New York City skyline and you can't see it. Massive skyscrapers barely visible in the thick orange haze, bridges disappearing too. Low visibility delaying flights at New York City area airports, stranding passengers. Officials urging people to stay indoors and if not, mask up, preferably with a high quality mask like N or KN95s. New York's governor says they'll be distributing a million N95 masks. This is uh, our old friend, one you never want to see again perhaps, but this mask can make a difference. In Washington, D.C., officials shutting down the zoo and Major League Baseball officials postponing the Nationals game. Air quality warnings from St. Louis to Boston. New Jersey's largest school district canceling classes Thursday. The governor renewing calls for action when it comes to climate change. Climate change is here, and unfortunately this is our new reality. That disturbing orange haze in the sky that smell of smoke and that burning in our throats, those are clear warning signs that the status quo cannot continue. Meanwhile, in Canada, where this smoke is coming from, the fires just keep burning. I usually break out in tears most of the time just talking about it. More than six million acres destroyed so far. Here in the U.S., we are expecting to see some relief on Friday and over the weekend. Winds will shift and hopefully move the smoke away from the country. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Back here at home, UofL Health is advising us on the health impacts of poor air quality. We know those with chronic illnesses like COPD and asthma are affected when there is poor air quality, but there are also dangers to breathing in air pollution for extended periods of time. What people don't think about because you don't feel it happening is that air pollution can impact heart disease. It can acutely, again, right away, help trigger things like heart attacks. Um, but long-term exposure can also put you at risk for heart disease. It can also increase your risk of diabetes and different cancers. They are now suggesting you should watch out for symptoms of a heart attack. Seek care if you're feeling any chest pain, pressure, nausea, or lightheadedness. Tomorrow marks one month since Norton Healthcare first announced they were under cyber attack. And still, the company has limited access to many online tools. Here's what we know right now. The Norton Information Services team noticed suspicious activity on the network and were alerted to the receipt of a fax communication containing threats and demands back in May. Immediately, patients started noticing impacts. Sharing with us here at WHAS 11, they were having trouble filling prescriptions. Surgeries or other appointments were being postponed and test results were delayed. We know that this is having major impacts on many of you and that's why we continue pressing Norton Healthcare for answers. We sent the team at Norton multiple questions from you, our viewers, in hopes of providing clarity during what many of you have described as an uncertain time. Unfortunately, they did not answer any of our questions. They did send us a statement, which reads in part, any urgent and emergent patient issues are being addressed, and we encourage patients to call their provider if they have questions. Providing quality care to our patients is always our top priority. And we here at WHAS 11 will continue asking questions. We'll bring you an update once we have more answers. On Monday of this week, a water main break in Brandenburg led to a pump failure and left thousands of Meade County residents without water. Then, crews found the leak. Residents were told they could only use water for essential services. Now the leak has been repaired, but a new message is out from Meade County Water, telling residents to limit their outdoor water usage indefinitely. In a statement posted to the Meade County Water District Facebook page, they say MCWD has identified and is working to complete multiple projects to get more water into the system to improve the resiliency. 
The projects will take several months to complete, so we're asking customers to help us by limiting your water usage for watering lawns, landscapes, and gardens. They go on to say they're not sure how long they'll need residents to limit their outdoor water usage, and they'll provide further updates on their Facebook page. A Shively police officer is facing 20 counts of speeding more than 100 miles per hour. Back in May, a citizen called out William Boards for speeding in his cruiser. As a result of that complaint, Shively police say there is now a criminal and an internal investigation. Police say Boards had his three-year-old child in the car with him in almost half of those cases. The officer was issued a criminal summons and will be required to appear in court, charged with speeding, wanton endangerment, and official misconduct. In the meantime, he has been placed on administrative leave. A man accused of killing his mother may be released from a treatment facility in the next few days. Gavin Perkins was charged with murder back in 2018. Since then, family members say he's been held at Central State Hospital. Well, now Gavin is expected to walk free this weekend. Alexis Jones talked to his loved ones today. And Alexis, how do they feel about him being released? Well, Shay, they are terrified, to say the least. Ruth's, well, both of Ruth's, Perkins' two children have been fighting over the past five years to keep Gavin locked away. Though he's their brother, they say he's a danger to society. It's your birthday. It's your birthday. <laughs> One of the last fond memories Ruth Perkins' children have of her. She was pure joy. She was uh, just the definition of uh, selfless love, always putting others before herself. Sadly, Ruth was shot and killed in 2018 on Southern Meadows Road. The man accused for her death, her son, Gavin Perkins, who was living with Ruth at the time. I never believed he would harm someone else, not the person, not the Gavin we knew. Kirsten Russell says they started to see a shift in Gavin when he returned home from the military. They later learned he suffers from delusions and paranoia. He believes that specifically government agents are out to get him and he took her life because he believed she was a part of that conspiracy against him. Because of Gavin's mental state, he was found incompetent to stand trial twice, causing the criminal case to be dismissed. This last April, he was admitted to a treatment facility for 60 days, but now Gavin is expected to be released Saturday. And according to Chad Perkins, the new prosecutor on the case told them the law requires a person to have a previous conviction in order to be held for a long period of time. The new Commonwealth attorney is not reading the law correctly. In a statement, Jarena Weather says her office filed a petition Thursday to admit Gavin for 360 days. Now it's up to medical professionals to decide, leaving Ruth's children worried for their safety and the public's. If you're willing to take your loving mother's life, whose life would you not be willing to take? And we will keep you all updated once we learn what medical professionals decide. In the studio, Alexis Jones, WHS 11, on your side.